the gospel is all about. It says in John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. He thinks that you can. In John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and just keep that in mind. And they that worship him must worship in the spirit and in the truth. The only way I can worship God it's not through my flesh, which a time people try to teach you to do. It's, it is working through your spirit. That spirit must be born again. And look at it, the fact that you were made an image of God. This is telling us that we are spirit beings and a body operating in this earth, operating in this realm. But in the end, our spirit leaves this body. And we know that happens. And we turn to the reality of the spirit around. It says here in Luke, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should uh, come, uh, he answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, but the kingdom of God is within you. Once again, the kingdom of God is in the spiritual realm. The kingdom of God dwells in you. And marvel not, you must be born again in order for that to take place. Amen? So I, I'm going to bring that up to you that, that we are spiritual beings and, and the kingdom of God is within us. And it says here in uh, 1 Peter 2 21, for even here too were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now God is the plan to restore our relationship with God is to follow Christ and the example that he gave us. And if we go by that, then we can sit there and start operating according to his will. Jesus is our example. And never let people try to say, well, well whatever Jesus gave was the Old Testament. I'm telling you, is what Jesus gave us is what is most important, which is where the examples resides in, following him and knowing that if we do what he does, then our relationship with God the Father is also going to be intact and restored. And remember, prior to the Old Testament, I mean, you can please go back and read for yourself, but I hear a lot of people call God the Father. They call him God, they call him Almighty God, they, 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 they were fearful of him. And see, parents, you, you, you do not fear from your parents. You respect your parents. And then you know that if you do something wrong, there's a wrath that comes, but you're not operating in a relationship of fear, but a relationship of love and fellowship and dependence of a parent. And that's what I'm saying is that Christ brought to the table is to follow his example so that we'll be restored to the Father, a loving parent that we can go to boldly in a time of need. That's what you do in your real life. That's what you do in your real time, amen? You know, in John 10, verse 22, and I'm reading the 22 to 30 here, it says, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. 
the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. And I'm going to keep that emphasis how God, how Jesus is talking about God in the term of a parent. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than, look, all, oh, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And you know, when you look at more John, especially John 15, John 17, he said, we are one through the word he has given to us. And when we go by his word, stay in his word, abide in his word, then we become one with the Father, just like Jesus was one with the Father. And Jesus still is one with the Father. You see in verse 31, then the Jews looked up, to look, I mean, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. Of which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good works we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, in your Bible, in your scriptures, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods, small g, unto them the word of God came, amen, the scriptures cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. If I do the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe, that the Father is in me and I am him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of the hand. But you see that part about the fact is that the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in the Father. And Jesus is sitting there telling us for the scriptures for us, I'm talking to believers. That he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He said that the kingdom of God is within us, it resides in us. And that's what makes us one and restores our relationship with God. When we understand that it's a relationship between a parent and his children, we are children of God. You know, in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's a critical for us to understand, that he is the way. And that's why he is the example. And we want to get and come to the, to the Father. We ain't talking just the term of God, but a loving parent. A relationship is what God has used Jesus as that bridge to restore us to him as the Father. Just like back in Genesis, and when God came and walked in the cool of the day, he wanted a relationship with man. That's what he created man for. And he wanted that relationship to be the same as between a parent and a child. And that's why we children of God. You know what I'm saying? Mark 6, verse 5. I was looking at the Lord's Prayer, you know, we was talking about it. And, and one of the things we were saying is that because Christ was walking and while he was walking, he was walking in the Old Testament, that that prayer that was given was for the Old Testament. But I looked at it even more after taking that revelation of, of, of the Father. And like I said, if you look in the Old Testament, it's very rare you have any of the prophets, any of the of the uh, characters in the Old Old Testament uh, refer to God as a father. You got, you got a scattered here and there, but not the same emphasis that God wants us to establish relationship with. So I looked at this and I started in verse 5. It says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as a hypocrite, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue 
in the churches and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Brother, I say to you, you have, they have their reward because we want to be seen and press men. We have our reward here. But that's not the reward you're going to get from God. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray where? To who? To thy father. Where? In secret. Which is in secret. And thy father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly. He's talking about a personal relationship, not based on people, not based on the approval of people, the, the relationship based on you and the father, you and your parents. And when you pray, use that vain repetition that the heathens do, for they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. You know, God is sitting there saying, look, stop, don't stop trying to impress people. It ain't about that. Don't try to sit there and be all fancy with words because you don't know, be being fancy with words. Just focus on your relationship with them. Be real him just like a child is to their parents. You know, that's one good thing about that. When you have a relationship, and most of you do have a relationship with your parents, you don't come up there and sit there and try to play phony. You be who you are. Because your parents raise you to be who you are. Verse 8. Be not you therefore lack unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Just like a parent does for us, and say they raise us, and then when you're raising your children, you the one constantly getting the things they need, getting the provision they need, getting the clothes they need, getting the material they need, all the way from the time you were a child to taking them all the way to college. The parent knows it and try to give them things they need to be successful. And here's the part we're talking about is a, it's the Old Testament prayer. Like I said, you can do that. But just understand this type of prayer, though Jesus was walking under the law, he still gave them a concept that is not traditionally accepted or put into the law. They talked about love the Lord thy God. Yeah, he's talking about the Father. So he said here, that I'm telling you a different approach of how to pray. This is what he said, our Father which art in heaven. That's what I was telling you of the title, the restoring relationship with God the Father in heaven. And so that's that, that start of that prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Remember we said that the kingdom of God comes not with observation. The kingdom of God comes within you. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. When I was talking to some of the brothers before, I'm saying that God is in there saying, look, whatever's going on in heaven, that will will be done on earth. So my point is, whatever's going on in heaven, that also applies to what he wants you to do on earth. Some people sit there saying, well, we talk about the fact his will of Jesus dying on the cross. Hey, that was one of his will. But he has more than one will. His will, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So whatever's going on in heaven, that's what he wants going in on earth. You, but if you want to be single, that's up to you. I'm just sitting there saying this. That what I'm reading is whatever's going on in heaven, he also wanted to die here on earth. He said, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt towards. Yes, God has forgiven your sin from the past, he, he, for the present and for the future. God has forgiven you of your sin. But he said, as I, we forgive others. So some people, I know we're talking about it in our Bible study, the fact is, wait a minute, it's, it's forgiven. It's forgiven as we forgive our mentors. That's what it says then. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever. Amen. So look, the prayer is finished, right? And amen, there's a prayer. There's the Lord's prayer. Got it. If you want to sit there, because you, if you want to sit there and say that was the Lord's prayer, that's the Old Testament prayer, there it is. Done. Amen. 
Right, it ends right there, right? The prayer is in. And if the prayer is answered, the amen is answered. So when it gets to 14 to 15, that's another situation. That's not in the prayer. That is saying, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Why? Because God is trying to restore the relationship of man. And therefore, we're part of that restoring. We're part of that reconciliation. We're part of that by forgiving those people who have trespassed against us. Same way we say we want others to forgive us, we want to forgive others. And the same reason we want to have a relationship with God, we forgive because we want our relationship to be maintained with God. So it's about a relationship. You, you want to keep that relationship, forgive others, just so that he can forgive you. If you did something wrong, it's not that I forgave you, past, present, and future. I don't even see that in the scripture. All I say is he forgive me of your sin. Got it. When you came into the body of Christ, and the sins you transgressed, those were forgiven. Don't on us, and that goes with me and anybody else. The thing we have done is the day and the thing we will do in the future. Those, the provision of the blood of Christ is to forgive us of those sins too. But it doesn't mean we don't sit there and not say to the Father, uh, forgive me for what I did. Same thing you have in relationship with your child. Same thing in relationship with your wife. If you did something wrong with them, to them, they're supposed to forgive you, but you, you got to ask for it. And until you ask, until you repent for it, there's a relationship broken between the child and the parent, between the husband and the wife. You don't sit there and say, well, you, you're my wife, you must forgive me. She wants to hear you say sorry. Tell her you're sorry. God is saying the same thing. If you did something wrong, you least got to at least approach him and say, that. thank you, Father, forgive me for my sin, which I did today. Because uh, I know you already got the blood covered for it, but let me make sure I let you know what it happened. And that I repented from that. And how often you will ask forgiveness, oh, how often God forgive you? But the Bible said, Jesus said, seven, seven times 70, 490 times a day. So obviously, the provision is set for us to be forgiven. It just, it just said, ask. If you don't, that's up to you. I'll ask. I'll sit there for me anyway, okay? He says in Ephesians chapter 2, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For this, for he is our peace who has made both one. See that? That one. That's what I'm saying. That racism and all this stuff. He wants us to be one. And has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments containing ordinance, for to make in himself a twine one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that are near for through him we both have access by one spirit where unto the Father. That's the God. That's the relationship I'm getting back in, that restoring unto the Father. And like I said, I didn't see that in the Old Testament, but I see that here. The scriptures is talking about a relationship of a parent and his children. God is our Heavenly Father. God is the one that wants to be our parent and never leave us or forsake us. God is recognizing our fault, just like a child, a child great. As a child is growing up, we, we give a lot of grace toward that child. That child uh, thinks of himself, the child pulls things down, the child runs and, and, and do kind of crazy things. And the parent is not sitting there saying, oh, you messed up or you got to die. No, the parent is sitting there saying, child, you shouldn't do that. And keep being patient with you. And as you get older, you find out that that grace changes and shifted with the understanding you have responsibility and you know better. And when you know better, do better. Amen? 
It says right here in 2 uh, Corinthians 5, 16, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, because we're spirit beings. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For all things are what? Of God, who has reconciled us, where? To himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, to which that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and is committed unto us the word of what? Reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead that you be reconciled to who? God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's all about being reconciled. It's all about restoring relationship with God the Father. And that's the piece, the main piece I've been pushing through this whole time of the study. Sorry I gave you a lot of scripture, but it's, it's about faith comes back here and let the word speak for itself. This relationship. God wants you to look at him as the Father, the Almighty God, loving parent that will never leave you, nor forsake you. That's what I want to leave you with this. And I hope you get the gist of what I was talking about. God is your father. And he wants to have a loving relationship with you. And he wants us to be one. So all this stuff about what the world creatures and those social structures and trying to put the higher priorities and try to say, I'm superior to you. you I'm you're not superior to you. I'm higher than you and you higher than me. God wants us to be one. And if we want a relationship with him, we have to start becoming and looking at each other as one. So I hope you uh, understand where I was coming from. I hope you take time and use this study and chew on it. But I, I wanted to at least share, at least I got on that. I know I gave you a lot of scripture today, but I really wanted to cover this. God wants to restore a relationship with you and look at him as a father. That's what he wants. And that's what we need to start looking at him as. God the Father in heaven. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're believing in, trusting in. So I hope you enjoy the uh, study. And I'll catch you next time. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye. Amen. So I really hope everybody enjoyed that. And let's go ahead and pray as we conclude from this study. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time of those who you have ordained to listen to this video. And I, I, I know you know who we're supposed to listen. And I know that who you're supposed to reach. And if it's just reaching me, God bless and thank you, Father, for giving the understanding that you are my Father, which are in heaven. And I thank you that you're never leaving or forsaken. And I thank you you're never leave or forsake those who listen, take time to study this word and listen to this video. I, Father, I thank you that I continue to review those type of things that give me understanding of your word and your will for my life, and for the life of the believer, and for the life of the world. I thank you. I give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.